Hey y'all, it's Amanda and this is my Texas Zone 8 garden and today it is a beautiful spring day. The temps are in the high 50s and so I am out at Covington's Nursery checking out their spring inventory. Okay, so Covington's is one of my local nurseries. I absolutely love it. It's located in Rowlett, Texas. It's one of the largest um, uh, nurseries in the state of Texas. They have 18 acres where they grow most of their own product, which is really exciting. And when you pull up to Covington's, it's huge and beautiful, but you don't really understand the expanse of how far back everything goes because they have basically all like, you know, the retail customer stuff at the front and then towards the back, you can go to the wholesale stuff and see all their trees and their growing production. It's very, very cool space. Now they've been around for at least 30 years. It might be closer to 40 years. They've been around for quite a while. So I'm not really excited. I'm looking around right now and it's absolutely gorgeous. And I can tell that they only have a portion of their um, inventory just because I've been coming here for so long. I have a really good idea what they usually have. And I would say they only have 50% of their inventory out at this point in time. So when you see how full and lush and beautiful it is, you're going to be like, really, where are they going to put the rest of the inventory? It's absolutely gorgeous. So we're going to go through, we're going to focus mainly on spring annuals. We're going to look at some perennials as well. And we're going to check out their shade area. They do have a whole separate area that's roses and shrubs and larger scale stuff. We are not going to go down to that portion today. I'm going to focus mainly on the spring color. Okay, so it's a really beautiful. They have quite a bit out. Over here is their gift shop, which is really great. I think I'll probably go in there and pick something out for a giveaway at this end of this video. So you guys stay tuned. And then if I decide to purchase anything, I will do a plant haul at the very beginning. I always love how they set up their structures. Just really pretty. Lots of hanging baskets. They have lots of pre-planted stuff. So you can just come in and buy stuff that's already ready to go and not have to stress about it, like beautiful pots and containers. Or can we all just like freak out over this delphinium? Absolutely gorgeous, 25. Here's one that's not bloomed out yet and look how many stems it has. Oh, maybe we'll get some of that for a uh, container. <laughs> so pretty. But um, they have lots of containers that are already pre-planted. And then, of course, you can come in here and get all the stuff that you want as well and make your own containers and stuff for your garden. Look at that. How beautiful. That is called Petunia Headliner Light Pink Sky. And the basket is $45. It's pretty pricey for a basket. I think it's because it has the decorative pot underneath it. 45 is a lot for um, a basket in my opinion, a basket of petunias. So they have tons of the stock here, which I would say the stock's kind of at the end of the season. This is only going to last probably till we get our first like 95 degree day, which will probably be in April. Um, but I do love stock and it smells absolutely amazing. Let's see. I think this verbena is an annual in this area. Those are pretty and fun. Have it in red and white. Dianthus, they still have a bunch of snapdragons available. Although these are cool season flowers, so they're only gonna last until we get a heat wave. With the way it's going recently, <laughs> it seems like we have a heat wave all the time. You use your alyssum. Here's a bunch of Dusty Miller starts. So pretty. I love Dusty Miller. And this works really great. The taller varieties work really great in cut flower arrangements. They've already got purse laying out. Very small to start off with. Oh man, they've already got Celosia out. Mexican Heather. Everything's really small because it's all just been recently started. There's your Texas Blue Bonnets are really fun if you're in the area these are so fun to plant they're part of the lupin or lupine um, family they've got poppies iceland icelandic poppies 
so pretty. They've even got marigolds out already. It is early for marigolds, y'all. But if you're working, if you're starting to plant up your uh, vegetable garden, go ahead and get your marigolds and plant it around the base. Here's Ganzia, Ganzia, Gazania, Gazania, Gazania. Y'all know I'm just gonna butcher the names. <laughs> this Friday's called New Day. Um, grows about eight to ten inches tall. What unique flowers. Very cool. I don't love the color combination. It's still very pretty. Here's some ageratum. I just started some ageratum from seed the other day. But these are much shorter. These only grow four to six inches tall. I grew, the stuff I started was the timeless mix and it will grow way taller and you can kind of see here's some of the flowers. Lots of hanging baskets that are not filled out yet. I will say that. This one I'm interested in because this looks like a um, hardy geranium plant. That's pretty. There are displays over here. I always love when they plant up this old bathtub. I think it's really pretty. Let's come over this direction and take a look. It's been good. Lots more hanging baskets. Here's a superbina hanging basket. Superbina Violet Ice. This is 6 to 12 inches tall. And this is annual except in our zone, so zone 8. So you could have it in the basket, you know, for the season and then take it out and plant it in the ground. I love the look of Alyssa. Look how pretty this is. It's so pretty. I have a big pot of Alyssa at home that is just absolutely gorgeous on the back porch. Looks like they have lots of proven winners hanging baskets this year. This is the Supertina Honey. Supertina Honey has not done very well for me in the past. Um, it's not as vigorous as some of the other Supertinias, so I think that. You know, in my mind, I compare it to bubblegum, and I don't think you can compare anything to bubblegum. So it just doesn't do as well as other ones. So there's a wide variety of supertinias over here, so. This is Lovey Dovey. So this one is a shorter variety, 6 to 12 inches, and spacing about 24 inches so it might be about 24 inches wide and this variety right here is called Priscilla Supertinia that's beautiful it's really nice 6 to 12 inches and then persimmon this one's much smaller 4 to 8 inches I wish some of them are more like warm tones or a little bit bigger this one is silverberry now these are all $7.99 um, bubblegum. And then over here is their Super Venus. So Peachy Keen is really pretty. Look at that. Gorgeous. 6 to 12 inches tall. Hardy to zone 8A. And we have the Royale Plum Wine. So it almost looks like it has a little bit more pink color to it. So purplish pink. Another Super Tunia Vista. This is Paradise. So this will get much larger. It's a Zinnia right here. Oh, it's called Biddens. Campfire Marshmallow Biddens. Part to full sun, 8 to 14 inches tall. It's an annual, except in zones 9 to 11. These are pretty. They look like little zinnias. Here's a bunch more varieties of super tunias here. 
and this one is the Super Tunia really red. These are smaller ones because they are not like Vistas, they're just Super Tunias, so 6 to 10 inches. This one is Royal Velvet, 6 to 12 inches. This one's kind of fun right here, Hoopla Vivid Orchid. 4 to 12 inches definitely stay smaller i think that's the deal with the super tunias is you just have to understand that it really needs to say vista if you're going to want it way bigger super tunia saffron finch and take time to look at these this is the hoopla the finch is meh and then royal magenta pretty now they have some of their um, own varieties of verbenas up here and they're priced the same as the um, proven winners verbenas so these don't have a particular tag on them they are available and then we have a lot more of the alyssum so i do love to grow snow princess gets quite large 10 to 16 inches i really love growing it on the edge of a pot i think it sort of looks really nice and kind of just spills over beautifully these are $7.99 each. Here's some larger containers of the Proven Winners and they are $12.99. Proven Winners, there's your Super Tunia Vista Fuchsia. And Super Tunia Royal Magenta. And it looks like they have the Super Tunia Royal Velvet in the larger, the Persimmon. Super Tunia Vista Jazzberry. They have the honey. These are all in the bigger and snowdrift. So this is a larger one too. Super Tunia Vista Snowdrift gets pretty big. Super Tunia really red. Lots of Dusty Miller. These are all on clearance and you can still plant these now. These make really great cut flower stems. So foliage. And in my area they overwinter beautifully. Super Tunia Black Cherry. That one's pretty. They have lots of Mexican heather up here. They've got some few lantanas. Really plumbago already. They have lots of warm weather stuff out already, which is kind of shocking. This verbena is really pretty. Verbena imprints impress sun white. Those are gorgeous. I would love to plant that on the side of the container spilling out. Oh my gosh, they even have hibiscus out already, y'all. That's insane. Lots of blue bonnets. Here's what the blue bonnets look like in bloom. So pretty. Okay, let's head over to the shaded area. I like to start over here to the right. Now this is also an area that I love because they've got a bunch of their containers planted up and I think it's really fun to look for inspiration. I mean, look at this purple and yellow combination. You've got alyssum, you've got ornamental cabbage, you've got some violas, pansies, snapdragons, stock, and a grass. So over here are their flats of petunias. And looks like price is $1.99 each. 20 count flat is 30 and 18 count flat is 27. This variety is called Petunia Pretty Rose. This variety is called Petunia Madness Yellow. That one's not blooming yet. It's a white. This one is Petunia Floral Midnight. I'm so excited that I grew all of my petunias from seed this year. <laughs> it's still fun to look at though. Petunia Pretty Flora Mix. So this will be a mixed variety right here. These are pretty and fun over here. This kind of pinwheel look. I don't see a tag for them. This kind of pinkish salmon color is really pretty. It's called Coral, Flora Coral. This one's really pretty. A little bit different. Let's see what its tag says over here. This one is called Petunia Hurrah Plum. Those are pretty. They have lots of snapdragons over here. They have beautiful geraniums. Geraniums are $7.99 each. What are these? These impatience? Yeah. Impatience Glimmer Burgundy. Look at that. It looks like a little rose. How beautiful. 
and then a little bit of a different impatience. This one is called Patchwork Cosmic Burgundy. And then over here, Diasia, Diaschia, Trinity Grace. How beautiful are those? Look at the, how petite they are. Now I assume that these are shade. No, these are full sun. These are gorgeous. They got their angel wing begonias are already out. Beautiful. Lots of the Gerber daisies. I'm not a fan of Gerber daisies. Now I did grow this last year. The brass brachycone, brachycone, and it's called Cherish. It's the same exact variety, and it was a awesome. It did really well all the way into like July. Um, but I planted it. I'll put up a picture of the planter. It did beautifully, and I really, really enjoyed its vibrant color. That was a new one for me last year. Lots of snapdragon, lots of snapdragons that haven't bloomed yet, which is kind of exciting. Snaptastic red. I mean, this is really what you want to be buying. These ones that haven't bloomed out yet. These are, you know, halfway done already. So starting with something like this will last you a whole lot longer. Some more interesting varieties over here. It's a dahlia. This is a yellow dahlia. Look how tiny and petite these little dahlias are. Those are so sweet. This guy, let's see how big he gets. Eight to ten inches. Eight to ten inches tall. That's super sweet. It looks like these are all little ones. So this one's the bright red. That one's the yellow. This one's another biddens that we we're looking at. So pretty and pink biddens. Those are fun. Another Biddens Blazing Star. Those are nice. And another Biddens called Blazing Embers. How fun. I don't really know anything about Biddens. If, you know, how those are, how they do in my area. Now, these, I love these. Petunias. This one is called midnight sky starlit midnight sky look at that so pretty oh look at these those are gorgeous amazonas plum cockatoo wow now it doesn't have any information about their size and stuff but you can google it while we're here when you're here these are pretty these are cosmic something i believe Nope. Headliner Electric Purple Sky. Those are ridiculously beautiful. This guy is Capella Sangria. The yellow center. And here's your black Petunia. Absolutely gorgeous. Petunia Slingshot. Slingshot Black Magic. This one is different. Okay, so this is Petunia Headliner Enchanted Sky. So let's see, that's that one. And then this one's electric, so it's a little bit more vibrant. This variety is called Petunia Capella Rim Fuchsia. Oh my gosh, so many Petunias, y'all. This is pretty. Look at these. Where's the tag? I don't see a tag on that one. Oh, I see it. Petunia Splash Dance Fuchsia Flamenco. These are long names, y'all. Very long names. <laughs> okay, let's look over here to the side. Looks like a bunch of Bacopa over here. Bacopa White, Megacopa. Megacopa, I'm assuming it gets big. So a cascade of free flowering blooms thrive in spring. Let's see, full sun, 12 to 18 inches. That's pretty big. I like Bacopa. I, I don't have a lot of success with Bacopa. Uh, it fries out pretty quick with our hot weather. Falls a big dark pink. And this one is eight to 12. It's purple too. These are impatience right here. And then here's sun patients. So the sun patients can grow in full sun, sun or shade. Full sun to part shade. 
16 to 30 inches. I would like to get some of these to plant in the shade garden. I think it would be really fun. So here's some Calabracoa. This variety is called Conga Red. It says a lot of these are really good for baskets. Look how this one already has like this kind of cascading habit to it. I don't think that's the same as the one, the red. Yeah, this one's different. This one's called Malibu Pink. Oh, look at this one. How unusual is that? Calabracoa Cabaret Goodnight Kiss. Those are pretty. Y'all, there's so many. Okay, so here's a whole bunch of proven winners. These are all their super bells, which are Calabracoa. So I don't have tons of luck with these planted with anything else or planted in the ground. With these, I typically have to plant them in their own container by themselves. They don't like to be with anybody else and they don't like to be in the ground. So we have the Coral Sun, Honeyberry. Now I don't keep up with all the proven winners, so y'all let me know if some of these are newer. Double Redstone, I know that that's like highly sought after when the new varieties come out. Magic Pink Lemonade. Blue. Tropical Sunrise. Double Let Love Sweat. Those are super sweet. Look how cute those are. Plum. Over Easy, I know it's been around for a while, but I really like the little yellow centers. I think they're super sweet. Double Twilight. Those. Double Amber, which I've grown and killed. And Holy Moly. Those are interesting. Look at those. Man, they're really coming out with so many varieties. So this one is Dreamsicle. Yellow. This one over here is Super Bell's Holy Smokes. Now those are fun. I wouldn't mind planting some of those in a container. They are $7.99 each. It's a little pricey for this tiny, tiny container. Here's some Namesia over here. Snow Angel. It's pretty. This variety is neat too. And these are just getting going. Sun Glow Purple Bicolor. Got some pink over here. Aromatic Rose Pink. Now back here it looks like we have a bunch more Sun Patients and Geraniums on this table. More Petunias. Here, there are larger containers of petunias. They're priced the same as the super petunias. And here's their Calabracoa. And these are like, you know, the off-brand as opposed to uh, proven winners. Now, I fall for these every year and they don't last long, y'all. Um, some variety of daisies. Don't be fooled. They literally only last like a month tops. Here we go. Sinetti Percalis. I, fall, I fell for them many years. Now these are neat over here. Look at these daisies. It's a Cape Daisy. It says it blooms through June. Height is 9 to 12 inches, so these are actually full grown. All right, bunch more annuals over here. Snow, stone crop, sedums. These are pretty. It's firecracker. I like the coloring on that. These are pin cushions. Some sage right here. It's called misty. That's really pretty. Looks like some salvia greggy or autumn sage. Lots of the uh, African Daisies, Serenity Coral Magic. 
kind of grow African daisies. I've never really enjoyed them, voltage golden. They don't look good in my garden. So I just, I guess I haven't had experience. Now, in all fairness, I haven't grown them in like three years. So Zion Pink Sun, those are very cool. I haven't grown them in a lot of years because I was unhappy with them. Zion Copper Amethyst, now those, that's ridiculously beautiful. Wow. It's like we have some Dianthus here, taller varieties for cut flowers. Lots more African daisies. Oh, look at this. Look how pretty that is. Okay, well, do I like African daisies now? What are, what are we doing? <laughs> this one's called 40 Harvest Moon. Well, that is just stunning. These are pretty too. These kind of like double looking ones. 40 Purple. Oh, the whites are lovely. 40 white. Okay, over here is a bunch of proven winners, begonias. They're tuberous begonias, which I'm obsessed with. Um, they are absolutely stunning. Look at that. These take shade, part shade to full shade, 8 to 12 inches. This is a nonstop orange tuberous begonia. Oh my god, I love these so much. I want these very much for my shade garden. Double Delight Blush Rose. And let's see what one of those looks like. Oh my gosh, so sweet. This one looks darker. Joy Red Tuberous Begonia. I do love reds. I know that a lot of other gardeners don't. Look at that. So pretty. Here's just kind of their standards. They're doubled up, double ups but those grow pretty big, which is really, really nice. So it'd be fun to mix some of these. I have a tiered planter that I'm looking at utilizing these on. Y'all shut up, look at this. That one's pretty. That one is, oh, Primrose Begonia. Double Delight Primrose Begonia. So pretty. This one right here is called Rose Pettigoat. Look at that. Love. This one is called tuberous, uh, Fire Tuberous Begonia. Now I wonder if I can take these, dig these up at the end of the season, bring them in and overwinter them and then start them again. That's gorgeous. This is like roses. Apple Blossom. Wow. yellow. Wow, those are stunning. Here's some Lobelia over here. This is the Laguna Compact Blue with Eye. Full to part sun. And then they have the purple in here, which is the ultraviolet, I believe. Ultraviolet. A lot more shade plants over here. Hookah, hookra, coral bells. Gonna kind of do a slow walk. I do love to grow Silver Falls Dichondra. This gets really, really, really long. It's full to part sun. This is a fun one to grow. What are these? Are these like angel trumpets things? What's this? Datura Belle Blanc White. Oh, look at the light purple. That has no tags. Darn. They have some Columbine over here. Columbine is blue white, early bird, blue white Columbine. Here's the red and white columbine. I do like columbine. I don't grow it very often. Lots of ferns, which is something I'm wanting to explore more in the Shade Garden Hardy Autumn Fern. It's a leopard plant, which I just added. And here's a spotted leopard plant. That's neat. 
Let's see, these are proven winners, Shadowland Echo of Sun Hostas. Y'all know I'm not a fan of hostas. I mean, I understand that there's a time and a place for them. And I think maybe that now that I have a shade garden, I'd be way more interested. They have an autumn frost. And this one is called Diamond Lake. So you still have tons of hellebore litten roses. Lots of ground cover. I need hours to explore. Lots of coleus, which y'all know I do not need. <laughs> I am good on the coleus. Okay, let's head over to the perennial section. So out here is the perennial section along with all of their, a bunch of their pottery, pottery not all of them. So over here, they have like the four inch perennials across here, which is nice. And then over here is mostly gallon perennials. Um, I do see some quart perennials over there too. So let's take a look. They've got some Speedwell Veronica. I don't grow this in my area. It doesn't do very well for me. And I have tried multiple times. So I've just stopped and given up <laughs> at this point. Here's some Homestead. Is this Homestead? Yeah, Homestead Vermina, which is a powerhouse in this area. So if you're really wanting to add some really beautiful color, Homestead Verbena is definitely the way to go. Lots of beautiful purple tones. Looks like they have it in red. This is an Endurascape red as well. Stackies, I'm not familiar with that. Here we have a, a Lansier Fuzzy Wuzzy. That's sweet. Hen and Chicks. Let's see, Penstemon that's already bloomed out. That's insanity. I wouldn't want to buy it already bloomed out. Spanish lavender. This one is lavendula. Hot poker. Guara. Look at the fox though. This is pretty. This one is digitalis grandiflora yellow. Fox glove is poisonous, but still gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Lots of dianthus, already bloomed out, which is crazy to me that we're bloomed out already. I don't want to buy bloomed out. Wormwood Artemisia. Plumbago over here, like, like a shorter variety of Plumbago. It's interesting. Blooms late summer to mid-fall. Growth that's only about six to eight inches tall, so super small. Tixie, Tixie, Tixie. Ice plant, a lot of the typical stuff that you would usually see. Okay, so lots of salvias. This is rose marvel. Salvias are great for our area. Plant in full sun, 10 to 12 inches tall. I like a larger salvia. These are kind of shorter and smaller. This one over here is blue marvel, which I assume because it's a marvel as well, it's going to be shorter as well. Yeah, 10 to 12 inches. I like a taller sal salvia. Although some people don't like a taller, taller salvia because it does fall over um, once it gets really tall. So you have to support it or be willing to cut it back. This is Mexican bush sage, which is really fun to grow. Absolutely beautiful and is very hardy. It likes the heat. Got some salvia greggies, autumn sage. We got yarrow that's blooming its head off already. A little moonshine. So I grow moonshine. So a little moonshine. Yeah, it's only 12 to 14 inches. Whereas the um, standard moonshine is about two feet. So over here I see Blackfoot Daisy, which is really great for our area, especially if you are wanting something that's drought tolerant. Comes back as a perennial sweet little daisy blooms. I've had fun growing that as well. Some kind of Shasta Daisy over here. So pretty. Um, just standard Shasta Daisy it says. Size is about 15 to 18 inches tall. Looks like we've got some Catmint Nepeta over here. Walker's Low. This guy is 18 to 24 inches. Oh that's a big guy. I, I like Nepeta. It's such a good go-to. This guy's different. Spanish lavender I'm not familiar with. Auto Quast. 
fast. 20, 40, 30 inches tall. That's tall. Huh. Lots of delphinium hanging out. Always drawn by the delphinium every year. We have guara over here. It looks like some more lands ear. So this is Stacky's Helen von Stein lands ear. I grow Helen von Stein in my garden. All our perennials look to be about $12.99. This is called Eurasium Sunstrong Bicolor Purple Wallflower. I'm not familiar with that. Those are pretty. It looks like they start blooming low and then bloom, 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 bloom. Like almost like a Cleome. Okay, so this is a lot of dianthus over here, and I grow a lot of dianthus. You can get it short, you can get it in a tall. I really like this silver blue foliage. This one right here is Georgia Peach Pie. And you can see a little bit of that color starting to come. But then here's some shorter varieties that will, you know, end up being more of like a um, cover crop or more of a ground cover. This one might be cherry pie. I've grown it before. Yeah, cherry pie. I've grown that one before. It's really pretty. It's the contrast between the red, um, cherry red blooms and the blue green foliage is beautiful. If you want dianthus, every time it blooms, just shear it back and it will give you another round of blooms. I love dianthus. I think it's way underutilized in gardens. I mean, check these out. How fun. This one is called Sun Floor Pink Charmy. Oh, I like those. Those are really pretty. All right, over here we have the Fashionably, this is Phlox. So Fashionably Early Lavender Ice, 30 to 36 inches tall and wide. Yes, that's what I want. That's pretty. I want more garden flocks in my garden. Okay, that was super fun. Um, so I love Covington's because every time I go, I meet people there. Every time I go, their customer service is really good and knowledgeable, um, which is really, really fun. Even though like today I was checking out and there was a new girl there and literally it's her first three hours <laughs> starting. She was just super sweet. You could tell that she was frustrated, but she was kind the whole time. And then immediately other employees came over to help her, to make sure she was okay, to walk her through the process. I always just leave with a smile from Cummington's, which makes me feel really, really good. So I found some good stuff where I'm gonna do a plant haul when we get back to the house. And I ended up picking up some botanical interest seeds that I'll do as a giveaway at the end of this video. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Okay. So I definitely picked up some things. So here's my thought process. I was just commenting with someone else about how when I go to a nursery, I really do have, try to have a plan of what I'm getting because if I don't, I am a person who will just buy all things, not have a place to put it, if that makes sense. So my first idea is I wanna create my first container for the spring. It is going to be that terracotta um, one that is out front. I planted red delphinium in it last year. So I picked up an additional delphinium. I think this might be white. Even if it's blue, that would be fine. So I did get that. That's gonna be the main focal wow factor in my container. And then I got some, now the delphinium will only last about a month um, and then it will be gone. The other plants that I purchase will last much longer. So I also plant, purchased a Dusty Miller at half price. It was only $4.88. I, in addition, picked up this white verbena. I don't see what the name of it is in here. I don't, it doesn't have a tag. But a really white, pretty verbena that I believe is a perennial. I am hoping it's a perennial. But I think it has a really nice trailing habit already, so it should trail over the side really well. And then I picked up a um, geranium. This particular variety is called Fantasia Purple Sizzle Geranium. And so that's gonna be mixed in. And then in addition, I'm gonna pull in several of my petunias that I have grown from seed. And those are gonna be worked in to spill off the edge. So it should be a really nice, beautiful focal point for the spring. Now, come summer, there's a lot of these I'll be able to leave. The verbena will be able to stay, the Dusty Miller, this won't. Um, 
they always call this a perennial in my area, delphinium, and it's never perennial for me. I always have to start over on it. Most likely the geranium will taper out a little bit as well. The petunias will taper out. So I will have a neutral color palette with these other ones right here that I can come back to and add some additional things to it. So I'm looking forward to doing that. So that is one project that I ended up putting together there. The next one, I selected a series of begonias, the tuberous begonias from Proven Winners. I'm obsessed with them. And I was talking to the people at Covington's and they were saying that they were flying off the shelves. They had already brought in their second round because they had already sold their entire first round because they're just so unusual and whimsical and amazing. And these are a little pricey at $7.99. I was talking to people at Covington's and I was like, should I try to dig these up and overwinter them inside? She was like, absolutely, because they are tuberous begonias. So that would be amazing. And maybe after a couple of years, I can divide this plant, which would be great. So the first variety is the nonstop rose petticoat tuberous begonia. And this is from Proven Winners. It's part shade to shade, eight to 12 inches tall. It is annual except in zones nine through 11. Um, needs fertilizer, water is dry to normal, part shade to shade, heat tolerant, deadheading, not necessarily in low maintenance, which would be absolutely amazing. Absolutely beautiful. The blooms are stunning. And these are going to be utilized in the shade garden. I've got this beautiful tiered metal rack um, that I got. It's white and I've been wanting to fill it with begonias, some type of trailing plants, like I'm thinking Creeping Jenny, some things along those lines, and just have this really elaborately beautiful piece. So that's the first one. The next one is called Nonstop, Nonstop Fire Tuberous Begonia, and it is part shade to shade, eight to 12 inches tall, annual in zones, annual except in zones 10A through 11B. Um, water, fertilized regularly for best results, water is normal, part shade to shade, deadheading, not necessarily landscape plants. So I'm really excited. I wanted to get all different varieties so I can really just kind of explore and study these because they are all so beautiful. This next one I knew was coming home with me just purely because of the name. It is called Double Delight Apple Blossom and it is full to part sun, eight to 14 inches tall. Um, let's see. Annual except in zones 9B to 11B, fertilized regularly for best results, normal water, full to part sun, deadheading not necessary, fragrant blooms, long blooming. Mm, yeah, this smells really, really good. Okay, and then the next one that I got is the nonstop yellow tuberous begonia. This is part shade to shade, 8 to 12 inches tall. Let's see, annual except in zones 10A to 11B, regular, fertilize regularly for best results, normal watering, part shade to shade, deadheading, not necessarily, not necessary landscape plant. I, I just think it's so sweet and so beautiful. And the thing that's great about these begonias is they have unique shapes to their leaves as well. So it's not all about the blooms. And then the next variety, the last one I got, is called the Double Delight Primrose, full to part sun, 18 to 14 inches tall. It is annual except in zones 9B to 11B, fertilized regularly for best results, water normal, light full to part sun, deadhead not necessary, fragrant blooms, continuous bloom or rebloomer. I am super excited. I paid a pretty penny for these. These were $7.99 each, which is not a small amount at all. Okay, so that is a project for going into the shade garden. In addition, I picked up some uh, verbena to tuck into my gardens to really start to create a little bit more ground cover. That is something I'm wanting to have more of as um, in my garden. So the variety, I picked up three small ones and it's verbena homestead pink. And I think that these are like around $5 each. Um, spreading, low growing with showy pink blooms all summer, useful as a flowering ground cover, will tolerate heat and drought, full sun exposure, blooms summer to fall, regularly water, uh, water regularly, hardiness to 32 degrees. Hmm. This might be up to grow as an annual. That's okay though. I'd be totally fine with that. It gets about six inches tall to three to four feet wide. So really nice. I was hoping that they were perennial, but that's totally fine. Even at that price. And if they spelt spread three to four feet, that would be absolutely amazing. And then I also picked up one of the um, Snow Princess, um, Snow Princess Alyssums by Proven Winners. 
with the idea I thought that I would put it in this container but I'm not so sure I think it might be too much so I'm going to hold on to it and probably put it in its own container and then lastly I did pick up some seeds for a giveaway okay I picked up some seeds from botanical interests and I picked up seeds that I'm going to be starting soon so I thought it might be fun to give some away to some other people um, the varieties I picked up was the they're all by botanical interests sunflower lemon queen sunflower goldie honey bear super cute sunflower vanilla ice sweet william double blend zinnia northern lights blend and zinnia california giants blend and these are all seeds that i'm going to be starting real soon anyway so i thought it might be really fun to give away so if you're in the u.s and you are interested in um, winning these seeds you can drop a comment below tell me your favorite part of the tour that i just did if there's a plant that you like a plant that you didn't like one that you've had success with it maybe one that you've killed <laughs> whatever information you can share with us would be great and i'll post the winner to this in another video in about a week typically for winning for giveaways i just post a little picture in a video usually towards the front of the video that has the person's um, handle on it so just drop a comment below and let me know if you're interested in winning these all right so that was a fun outing it's absolutely beautiful i'm very very excited to see what they i think they're going to look totally different in two weeks so i'm really excited to see how much they have already and then i know covington's enough that it's going to be stuffed to the gills so even it'll be hard getting walking around in the next few weeks with all the stuff that they're going to have so very exciting if you're close by make sure you swing by check it out see what they have if you spend a certain amount and you show them all your receipts they put you in their gardeners club and after that you can enter your phone number and get 10 percent off your purchase i've been doing it for years i love it so that is a benefit of shopping at covington's as well all right you all as always make sure you like comment and subscribe to the channel let me know if you are seeing spring plants in your local nurseries as of yet and check me out on my social media outlets including instagram facebook and tiktok as always she's a mad gardener or decorator or anything else that she wants to be thanks y'all